Hey, welcome to another episode of the Not Scrum Dumb podcast. I'm your co-host, Adriana Marshall, and that's my amazing co-host. Grand Scrum Master Scott. So today we're going to take you on a different type of journey. We want you to imagine sitting at a table in a restaurant where your order gets transformed into a delightful meal. Now imagine if the person taking your order also had the vision, authority, and passion to ensure not just your meal, but your entire dining experience was unforgettable. Have you ever wondered what turns a good meal into an unforgettable experience? It's the same kind of magic that can elevate a product owner from a scribe who merely takes orders to an entrepreneur who crafts remarkable product delivery. In today's episode, we'll serve you up a feast of insights on how a Scrum Master can be the catalyst for this transformation. We'll share practical strategies, sprinkle in some of our real life stories. And of course, we want to hear from you. So leave your experience of dealing with a product owner from Scribe in the comments. So let's get ready to transform the way we see the product owner role and dish out value like never before. All right, Scott, tell us for the people that don't know already what a Scribe is and give us a little bit of that restaurant analogy since we're at the restaurant. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Adriana. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Oftentimes, when we go into an environment, ladies and gentlemen, I see two types of product owners. Most of the time, they start out as a scribe. Now, when we say the word scribe, we mean that this person is someone that acts as a liaison between the stakeholders and the scrum team. So here's what that looks like. Product owner go talks to the stakeholder. Hey, stakeholder, what do you want? Stakeholder gives them some stuff. Product owner brings it back to the scrum team. That's okay. But is that what we read in the scrum guide of what the product owner should be, is, and smell like, feel like? Probably not. So let me give you an analogy that you can understand. I want you to visualize that you and your significant other are at a restaurant right now. You are the stakeholder. And a waiter or a waitress is going to come to your table, a.k.a. the product owner. The product owner is going to ask you for what you want. You're going to put in your order. The product owner is going to take your order to the kitchen so that the developers can make it. Developer is going to hit the bell when it's ready. The product owner is going to bring the food to where you are. Now, when we think about a scribe, that's what a scribe looks like in your workplace. So, when you think about that analogy, as you're watching your product owner, you ask yourself, Does my product owner look like a scribe? The question becomes, how are you going to help them go from being a scribe to our next restaurant? We ultimately want our product owner to be like an entrepreneur. So, what does that look like if we're using a restaurant analogy? But well, the best analogy I can give you, ladies and gentlemen, when I was on vacation in the Caribbean, this place called Turks and Caicos Island, private island called Ambergris Cay. Now, on that island, I heard of something I've never heard of before. Mr. Adams, would you like to be at the chef's table? I thought, oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> now, here's the difference. Now, watch this product owner, the head chef. They had total control over the menu. Orders in. We at the table, me and my dinner party. The chef comes up. Very nice person. Are you allergic to anything? No. Well, as I cook, do you want your meat cooked some kind of particular way? No. So we let it up to the chef, the product owner, to help us create our product goal, which was to have an amazing dining experience. We had a seven-course meal, stuff we've seen before, like steak, lobster, shrimp. But the presentation was wow, wow. And then you got a chef cooking for you and your party at your table. Oh, it was legendary. And then when it was over, it was truly, truly, ladies and gentlemen, a full dining experience. So I wonder oftentimes, how can we create something like that in our workplace where we can help our product owner go from a scribe to being an entrepreneur where they over the entire dining experience? Remember, we got a head chef. That's probably a restaurant manager there too, but the restaurant manager wasn't telling the head chef of what to prepare, how to prepare for us totally left up to the creativity of the chef to deliver us an amazing dining experience. And that particular chef delivered amazingly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now that we understand the difference, Andriana, how do we begin to help our product owner go from being a scribe to an entrepreneur? Yeah, there are four key areas to help your product owner achieve this transformation. The first one is empowering them to make this one of the ways you can help them as a scrum master is coach the organization or the manager. Sometimes we have managers that are actually limiting the product owner from having autonomy. 
I dealt with a situation where the manager would really pressure the person to go in a particular direction instead of allowing him to present like, this is what I research. This is the direction that is the best for our team. This is what we're feedback that we're getting from our user base, our customers, our additional stakeholders, and just really having to coach that manager in trust, trusting that this person is giving their best, trusting that this person is doing the right thing. He's putting in the work. He understands the customer deeply. He is doing research and coming up with really great and innovative ideas. And he's working well with the team. So for me, that's the first thing that comes to mind is coaching the, the manager if that particular person is causing issues and not really respecting the scrum uh, accountabilities, which is really important. Scott, what do you have? In terms of helping a product owner go from being a scribe to a entrepreneur, one of the first things I do, ladies and gentlemen, this is my thing. I like to paint a picture to the product owner of how much is, does it cost for us to run a sprint? Most companies do two-week sprints, so let's just do the easy math. If you have 10 people on your team, let's say everybody making $100,000, you multiply 10 times 100,000, you get $1 million per year. That is your budget for a scrum team. Now, if you divide that by 26, two weeks in a year, then you would get $38,461. Now, that is what it's costing you per sprint. Now, this is a conversation I'm having one-on-one -on -one with my product owner just to help them see how much money are we spending every single sprint and we're probably not even delivering anything. We're probably not even getting it done. So I'm helping them to see this number. Product owner, do you realize that for the last few sprints, we haven't gotten it done and we spent $38,461 of the company's money. Now, watch this. Here's the key. Now, product owner, I want you to think about this. If you had somebody in your house and she was paying $38,000 every two weeks and they was coming up short, not showing you anything, how long would that person be working for you? Probably not long is what they're going to say. So that is like the first step for me to help that product owner to think about a business person. And, and that's just another step to help them go, go towards being an entrepreneur. The next point, Andriana. Is fostering a collaborative environment. So the thing that comes to my mind is promote stakeholder engagement. Encourage the product owner to actively engage stakeholders through regular updates, feedback sessions, and inclusive planning. I think the real key that I really want to point out here is they're not just taking orders, but they're giving feedback to them. So I had a situation where we had a product owner who was just taking the orders. And by the time we looked at what was happening, it's like, whoa, these two things that were requested by someone conflict and they could corrupt the data and they got paid off their data. So it could have been a total disaster if we didn't catch it towards the end. But that's just one of those situations where when we found that out, we brought in the stakeholder. We're in the sessions with the product owner and not just telling them what to do, but actively showing the product owner, this is how we can engage with our customer base. Here's how we can engage with our stakeholder and give them that feedback and help them understand that it's not as simple as just requesting thing, but we need to have a, this collaboration so we don't mess up the data. The, the stakeholder was super receptive to what we were talking about. And then we made sure that we had more regular feedback sessions because of that. But if you start off with that, people trust you and you really have that entrepreneur spirit. <laughs> All right. What do you have for this one, Scott? In terms of fostering a collaborative environment, I like to organize cross-functional meetings. One of the biggest mistakes I made in my career was we had this lead software developer, Trini Voss, we'd call him. Trini Voss was the only one that knew how to do releases at night. And we knew Trini Voss was going to be on vacation next week. The product owner. And I, the Scrum Master, we assumed that all the developers had already collaborated and, and understood what needed to be done at the release. Here we are with the remaining team member. Nine o'clock at night, we're trying to release this here particular product into production, and we can't. Why? Because Srini Vaz is not there. Srini Vaz knew something that the rest of the teams did not know, and we didn't know until we got to that particular point. So we had to roll the release back. We could not do it. So... Can you imagine what the next retrospective looked like? Hey, y'all, how can we work this out so that we won't be dependent upon one person or another person so that if they're out, they get sick or whatever happens, that we can get this stuff to production so our customers can have what they need to have. Now, that was a developer issue, but also look at it from a standpoint that also impacted the product owner because we could not deliver and give our customers what they wanted at that particular moment. 
So Scrum does said we need to be cross-functional. We was cross-functional. We had all the skills on the team we needed to release and deliver value and blah, blah, blah. But we relied on one person that had some information that us that didn't. So lesson learned. Andriano. Yeah, and the third one is encouraging a visionary approach. And one thing that you can do as a Scrum Master to help the product owner in this is facilitate roadmap creation. So assist the product owner in creating a long-term product roadmap that aligns with the organizational goals and market trends. This, I personally, I find this to be fun because you're really thinking forward about the product. This is why I wanted to talk about this one because it's my favorite to do. Really thinking through what have we discussed? What's our gap in the market? What are the things that we can fulfill for our users? What are they asking for? And thinking big in this situation, nothing is uh, too big for a roadmap session, at least starting out. You do that brainstorming session and then you can piece by piece break it down and work with the developers and decide what's actually like possible or at least start some type of proof of concept to see if it works or if it doesn't work. And this is one of my favorite things. And I think it's probably one of the easiest ways to help your product owner have a bigger vision and go from scribe to a true entrepreneur. Scott, what do you have for this one? The thing I will add to that, Andre, and all good points is to expose your product owner to different perspectives. That's going to line to what you're saying. We want to, of course, have the users at your sprint review so that the product owner can actually get that real-time feedback in regards of how people are using this. You also want the product owner to tap into industry experts based upon what it is we're building. And I will also ask this, product owner, are you going to any type of conferences to up your skills or just to widen your perspective? Typically, most companies have some type of budget for your product owner to do this. The question becomes, is your product owner tapping into that? Is your product owner too busy to do that? So, hey, product owner, why don't you go ahead and go to that conference? Let me know what I need to do while you're out. I can hold the ship down for two or three days while you go get you some continuous education. Well, Scrum Masters have a product owner out however you can so they can up their skills and expand their perspective. Yeah, and that goes right into our last thing, which is continuous learning and growth. So that goes perfectly. To add to that, there are books and courses and seminars and learning different agile frameworks and some market trends. So I think that goes really well with the seminars and conferences that you mentioned. There's plenty of workshops in those conferences where you can learn new techniques and new market trends and different things like that. So I think that's really awesome. One of the things that I actually did with a new product owner was we went through the book, Professional Product Owner together. Looked at some things, not everything you can implement. Not everything makes sense, but there's such a variety of ideas and we were able to take some of those things and implement those. And so that just also makes learning fun and a joint effort. And there were a lot of new things that I learned as well. So what else do you have for this one, Scott? In terms of continuous learning and growth, help your product owner come up with a personal development plan. In that one-on-one -on -one conversation you have with him or her, hey, product owner, what are some skills? What are some things you would like to work on? And see what some opportunities where you can help your product owner achieve that. It can be as Andriana spoke of. Now, I was in a situation where my product owner was so busy that they didn't have time for personal development because of the initiative we was working on. Now, that book that Andriana just mentioned, Professional Product Owner, excellent book. I read that book just so that I can help my product owner become more efficient. So my product owner, again, didn't have time to read it at that particular moment. I read it and gave the product owner, hey, this is a snip. Hey, try this. I read this. This would be a cool idea. Why don't you try this? Oh, great. And my product owner appreciated that. And I think as Scrum Masters, we have time to do some of these things. If you see your team is just a nose down into a project, try to figure out some things that you think might be able to help them grow when they don't have the opportunity to, to do these things, continuously learn and grow themselves if you're in that particular environment. Yeah, great points. So to recap the four things that we went over to help your product owner go from scribe to entrepreneur, empowering decision-making, fostering a collaborative environment, encouraging a visionary approach, and continuously learning and growth. Well, we basically come to the end of our restaurant journey of our fine dining experience. So Understand, hopefully at this point, you understand that a product owner can really revolutionize how a team delivers value. And it's a Scrum Master's role to facilitate this growth. Helping them go from scribe to entrepreneur will really make a memorable experience for your team members, your customers, and your users. So thanks for tuning in to Not Scrum Dumb. If you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We've opened up our email list, so you can now subscribe to be a part of our email list. 
and stay connected with us. And if you stay to the end of this video, that means that you have an attention span greater than a goldfish. Be legendary, everyone, but not sure I'm dumb. Enjoy your feast. We'll see you on the next episode.